Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Pontiff of Japanese Whiskey here, your Tokyo Godfather, Mr. Mark Antimate, with another video of Gentleman's Club Whiskey. I'm joined by my friend, a fellow YouTuber. His Marcello name is Time. Marcelo. Channel name is Marcelo Time. Yeah. Right now, we're inside of Ginza, which is like the Beverly Hills, let's say, district yeah. of Tokyo. And we're inside of a shop called M Whiskey Museum Ginza. Now, looking at the f flyer of this place and how they describe it themselves, they say that this store is the world's largest Japanese whiskey store. They have more than 2,300 different kinds of vintage whiskey here. And uh, no joke, they actually have. Yes. I mean, we actually saw that. In addition to whiskey sales, we also mm. offer paid tastings. Please spend an elegant time at our shop. So... so this yeah, maybe we're going to have a tasting Maybe as well. we will have a tasting. Um, and, one, and one more thing. Yes. Being a museum, everything is for sale. That, that was actually impressive. Everything is for sale. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I'm going to verify it with the staff here, but yeah. he tells me, and I, I believe it, he says everything inside the shop is yeah. for sale. So the 2,300 unique offerings of whiskey that they have, Yeah. you just now, ask them for the price and they'll just, tell you. Um, let, let, let's put it as a well, human. Hold on. Yes, you're, sure. you're new to this channel. I am. <laughs> this, is, this is my second channel that I don't even think I told you about. This one is called Gentleman's Club Whiskey. It's purely oh, okay. whiskey. Wow. This has nothing to do with wristwatches or uh, fashion wonderful. like I usually talk about on Gentleman's uh, but, Masterclass. But even so, even so you say that. Yeah. Uh, just, but they need know, to know who you are. So I know. Please, I'm, I'm basically... Yeah. Uh, Introduce uh, yourself. Uh, I am a watch collector. I uh, have a channel uh, regarding uh, risk watches. And, uh, and, and here is something for you guys regarding whiskeys, you know. Um, I'm actually wearing now a Rolex. Right. Let's, is, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Yeah, yeah no, no. The, the, really, no, because it's actually, this is funny. I'm actually wearing a Rolex that is actually a platinum Rolex. Just... A roughly thing just to let you guys know is a watch that actually cost uh, uh, 75k regarding let's say gray market a, a bit more than that but here is the thing and we just look behind us yeah and it was a uh, Yamazaki that nearly cost 10 times more than this watch right think uh, about behind it. us is the 50 year old Yamazaki yeah, single malt whiskey they have two of them, yeah. and they used to have a 55, yeah. but it looks like somebody you know, had both that. Just, you know, for me, it's new to understand that we can now have a shot of a whiskey that nearly is like throwing this watch out, out of the water, you know? It's like a platinum Daytona each one glass. Imagine that, right? I got an idea. Why don't you right? give them this watch, tell them... To pour you about a tenth of the bottle to take home with you and of, of the Amazaki fifty-five, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly like that. Of course, I personally not going to do that, but yeah. ba basically, it's not far away from the truth. What, what you just said now, yeah, it's like a hundred cc. Is this? <laughs> so the section that we're sitting at now, yeah. this is this is a very large space that we're actually in. Wow, you guys mm. get inside of some of the b-roll that mm. i'm going to show off inside the video you'll be mm. able to see around the space yeah. but we're sitting inside the most expensive area now this is like the most highest end stuff that they have yeah the most age mckellens are behind us as well as the most yeah. age we, we, we saw mckellen yamazakis for, hibikis if uh, 200k uh, one, one of them is like 200k i just saw here i have uh, next to me by the way they also have cognacs so I have, a, I, I think it was a bottle of uh, O.S. Martin for, uh, in Japanese yen, is basically 4 million yen that I think is 35K. That's like 35,000 USD, right. It's like, <laughs> I, I think it's more expensive than some of the most expensive watches that I own. <laughs> You're so, not talking about that. I'm a, since he's a wristwatch collector yeah. and I'm a whiskey reviewer, whiskey writer and things like that, I'm getting ready to bring both worlds together yeah. like you guys never knew before. There is actually a lot of similarities between yeah. watch collecting and whiskey collecting. And right? whiskey collecting. Yeah. Something that I want to say, and even yeah. Austin is going to be, we have another watch collecting friend, yeah. Austin, who, who loves Rolex. Something that he didn't know, something that you might not know, is just the same inside of this world. 
Wow. If you buy the whiskey with the box, it is more valuable. valuable. Right. The same wow. as having box and papers with really? your Rolex watch. Yeah. So, so if you don't have the box, that could decrease so the price so by wait a second. hundreds uh, of thousands another, of dollars. Another, yeah. uh, maybe a not stupid question for me regarding uh, watches, but as we know, we, especially in vintage stuff, let's say, uh, do you care not only the box of, of, of the whiskey, do you care if the bottle got scratched or things like that? I mean, you guys go that deep? People would care about scratch bottles because they like to wow. do things like this. This is what people do inside of their houses inside the United States, the collectors. These display I things see. inside the United States, these are called cages. People like to have their whiskey wow. collections in glass cages inside of like their so, basement or cellar or something so like this. So it's like a pristine, a clean box, it has, clean papers, right. cl a clean, basically, bottle. If you send them a yeah. whiskey inside the mail and the, the corner of the box has been bent in or yeah, damaged, yeah, yeah. they're going to be very, very upset and maybe even want a refund, possibly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you have to be eh, basically like us in watch collection. Right. They have to be mint. The lucky thing, at least for me anyways, mm. I'm a whiskey drinker. I'm not a whiskey collector. Everything I buy, it doesn't matter how expensive it is, I open all bottles. I have, I don't collect anything. Yeah, I have you're, zero guys, whiskeys you're just, in my you're, collection. You're, you just get hurt in case Mark getting one of the bottles behind me that nearly cost uh, 10 times this watch, it would basically throw away 10 platonas there in the garbage basically it's not you throwing it away it. i i would have i would have an yeah. experience that nobody else inside the rest of oh, the world yeah. would have oh yeah definitely sure it, uh, i would like to be able to discuss the flavors and yeah. the taste and the aromas of whiskeys while the collectors all they could do is just talk about how much they paid and what wow. the bottle looks like, but I can actually talk about the you, flavors, the you know, unique you know flavors. What? You yes. know what? Let me tell uh, the guys here that they don't know about watches, and you actually do, regarding this even Platinum Daytona, you know, and we saw, actually, we went to some shops, uh, gray market dealers, actually, Yes. that they saw me with this watch, and they look at, uh, at you, and they tell you, hey, first time I see somebody actually wearing this watch. Right. Because they say, hey, we had already this watch like 10 times here, but we never saw somebody actually wearing the watch, just buying. It, the, this watch nearly is always clean. It's like a stamp, you know, they buy and, and transfer and buy and transfer. So it become kind of uh, un, unworn forever, right? Yes. And, uh, and then come call me stupid or come me and basically wear the watch, go hiking, scratch the watch, and I tell you, hey, I'm not going to live forever. Let me enjoy the watch. Maybe very similar to some of the guys around here. Hey, I have the money, I brought the whiskey. Yeah, it cost me 50K, it cost me 100K. I, I want to enjoy it because again, I'm not going to live forever. So yes, I think, I think it's so I'm thing. like that. The way that yeah. you enjoy your Rolex watches, you yeah. scratch up you have three precious metal yes. Rolexes and you scratch them all up, yeah. you use them all, you cook with these watches, yes. all wash dishes. I open all my bottles and I drink them. So I, I like to enjoy I things. See. The second parallel, you know, there is a secondhand market for Rolexes. Oh, you, can, you can either buy from the oh, AD for... I understand what you're getting so into. It, oh. In English, it's called MSRP. This is the suggested retail price. Wow. Rolex is not going to sell you above the MSRP. Yes, they yes. have a price that they sell it at. Yes. You know how much it's going to be. Yes. When you go to the gray market, they mark it up yeah. two times, three times by more the way, than this. By the way, we are in one of these places. We're right in now. a place like this, but for whiskey. These, yes. these are all markup prices. Exactly. You're buying them for the convenience that they have everything that you yeah. want here. So you are paying the convenient prices. Yeah, just, just let me cut you off here yes. just for a second. Behind us, I mean, uh, they, uh, they actually took it out now, but uh, I'm going to uh, give it. There is a bottle that is a uh, Yamazaki 55 years age whiskey. That whiskey, I'm telling you, it was uh, released, I think, two years ago as a... Uh, uh, I don't remember how many years anniversary of Yamazaki, but, but then it was actually limited for only 100 bottles. Yes, that's right. The price of that bottle, uh, 
it was retail for 120k yes now uh of course very similar to as you know in in the watch world it was uh, it, it was actually chosen by very important uh, whiskey collectors it, it they actually introduced that whiskey for yes so uh, i know i have a customer that they offer that whiskey for him right uh, again 120k um is is very into whiskeys he buy a lot of uh, good right. stuff he also drink his shit so if you ever have that kind of money yeah. my suggestion to you if you have it you buy that you don't yeah. think about it you don't think twice no you, but you, you this is this is not exactly. like this is not like holding on to a rolex no, I, but you don't know i, they, I would they, they, i would let me continue it. the story i would flip it let me continue within the a story. week right he got the offer and um you know, the same sometimes we're getting offered some watches. He declined. He said, uh, I don't think, I guess it's good, but maybe for 120K, I think I can buy something better than a Yamazaki 55. Yes. I think something more tasty. Yes. So he declined. He, he so decide. he's thinking about it in terms of he wants to open this thing. Yeah. Okay. And then he declined. Um, now this bottle, uh, it came here actually uh, from an auction that they actually selling this bottle now here for i think it's 1.2 million dollars now i think so yeah it was it, uh, if not then approximately yeah somewhere it was in that uh, ballpark close million. to that yes then uh, he came to me told me if i knew i would buy two <laughs> yeah <laughs> drink one and actually remind me basically what you said because if you actually get offered bottles like this that you know they're going to be so much valuable yes and you uh, have a um, chance to buy maybe two. Uh, that, yes. Uh, uh, that uh, one, one you sell to get your profit and not be greedy, how we say, because yes. uh, and, and at least drink one. So you, you're drinking one and you're getting your money anyway, if not uh, triple your money. Yes. And, and then you enjoy something that was probably never in your, not, no, not only in your lifetime, never in no lifetime. <laughs> you're going to be able to to taste something like that right totally so. agree man but as long as i've been a whiskey writer mm -hmm. and tasting whiskeys and doing these whiskey reviews i actually yeah. had never known about this place before yep. until no, you, hey, you you guys can walk around yeah. it's okay and, until you introduce me yeah. until you introduce me to this place i didn't know about it before yeah. so I'm, I'm glad that you brought me here no, it's, it's nice uh, to take a look at all of this stuff. But by the way, I, uh, for me to come here was uh, completely by coincidence. I didn't even knew this place. I didn't know exist. about it. How did you it, end up inside of here? With, um, with my wife, you know, when we go to, because uh, Ginza, by the way, guys, here in Ginza, there is multiple uh, malls, right? Yes. They have many malls, and we go by malls and malls, right? And it happened that we appear in a mall that... <laughs> this pump up yes and i was actually extremely surprised i was like wow when i saw that i immediately contacted you <laughs> right and <laughs> i realized that place and, and thank you for doing yeah. that much appreciated but yeah this place is like heaven mm. yeah it's, but uh, for me this place is a more look but don't touch i i don't think i can afford mm. these prices i'm i'm the hunter like yeah. somebody that wants to buy a new Rolex yeah. out of an authorized dealer or boutique, I want yeah. to buy my whiskey's retail price. I can't, I just can't see myself yeah. paying over retail for some of these things. It just, it just seems so ridiculous. You're, you're not, so I'm way, always on the hunt. This is so amazing that actually, yes, we are in a, in a, in a basically whiskey museum that they, how we call this gray market. But but here is the thing. Here is one yes. more thing. One more thing. Even uh, I realize that even in tradition uh, liquor shops, so they have how we call it the retail price, right? Yes. Of the whiskey. But uh, when when the distillery or the liquor shops they realize that the whiskey become more valuable and more rare, they also increase their prices quite a lot. You yes. Know? So even more than in, in my world in, in, uh, in watches, I mean, 
uh, the watch companies, let's say even Rolex, they increase the prices in a yearly basis. Usually it's about 5% to 10% they increase uh, yes. uh, every year. But you don't see suddenly already in the year a watch that increase uh, 50%. Or 100% Sandy, and you do see this with whiskeys. Yes. I did see this. Why? <laughs> you know, it, yes. it does happen. Regarding that, that here is completely, uh, we, uh, it, it's, I'm not going to use the word out, out of control, but really, um, it becomes so rare that uh, you, 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 you're paying the pipe, you know? All right. So I want to finish up with this. Mm. One thing is, you know, there's also rare pieces like limited edition pieces yeah. that a watchmaker might release and they might only release like 2,000 of these or X yeah. amount of watches. Same thing happens inside the whiskey world every year annually. There's limited edition pieces that are released and they're in limited quantities or it could be a numbered like uh, like numbered after the year. There's a 2023 version of Yamazaki floating around out there. Yeah, yes, they yes. only make 30,000 bottles. And once these bottles are finished, they'll never be remade like that with that same flavor profile ever again. So once they're gone, they're just gone. It's gone. And wow. as time goes on, the collectors are obviously keeping theirs, but people like me are drinking the ones that I buy, which means that the quantity decreases. The juice, yeah. Yeah, the juice decreases. So whereas it started with 30,000 bottles, after 15,000 yeah. people drank theirs, now there's only 15,000 bottles left. Then the price yeah. just goes even more through the roof. So yeah. that's the other thing about it. And, and, and by the way, even in, in, in my word, it's actually funny to match your words. I'm not going to say my word because you also, I'm, by the I'm way, part of guys, this world yeah, too. Uh, is, uh, Mark also collects watches. And, and by the way, Mark actually wearing now yeah. a uh, Rolex Explorer Explo 2. Explorer 2 that um, could I reform this as semi vintage? Yeah, you could say that. This is 2007. But, 2007. you know, they already have newer models with... Exactly. Yeah, the but, newer engine inside. But even in that watch, um, you know, numbers, comparing to the numbers that was released originally that year, you know, uh, I'm not going to say that some watches went to the garbage, but some watches, especially in that, in that time, maybe got destroyed, maybe never got serviced, maybe got stolen and got lost. Uh, somewhere, maybe a old guy that was living alone in his basement died, and the watch died with him. You know, so basically, a lot of that numbers also redu reduced. Yes, and also, really quickly, I'm I'm at a loss of words right now and a loss of thoughts. Like in 1999, this watch had came out, and it was like a transitional piece. Yes. It, it was a special serial number that was only made during that year, 1999. Yeah. So I think those pieces are going to be, Austin believes that they're going to be worth more money yeah. inside the future because it's just that time that Rolex maybe made 50 or 100,000 of these yeah. watches. So yeah, it remind me the whiskey thing, a uh, specific flavor. Yeah, a specific, specific yeah, serial yeah. number, yeah. All right. Wow. Anyways, glad to be here. It seems like a good yeah. time to end the video here. We had a nice little conversation about whiskey yeah. and watches. I thank you guys but, for watching. Tell me what you think about this place. If you're ever in Japan, do you, you guys plan on visiting here? Come visit this place. And uh, if you guys have the, the opportunity to buy any one of these. Guys, you guys can get anything here, especially the super rare Japanese whiskeys. I mean, <laughs> I, I wish I could uh, pay the pipe to, to men. Guys, you guys. Right. He's, he's amazing, he's absolutely amazing. And of course, the tasting, we might go to the tasting soon and see what they have. Uh, we'll see, we'll there. see what they have up there. It should be something sure. good. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching. Salute to you wherever you may be out inside the world. If you guys are drinking, make sure that you drink responsibly. And as always, gentlemen, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy. I'm out. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.